Concorde first soared through the skies in the late 1960s, the world was convinced that the future of passenger travel would be supersonic, fast, sleek, and unstoppable. But reality struck hard. The thunderous sonic booms that echoed across cities weren't just loud, they were destructive, shattering windows and shaking entire neighborhoods. By the early 2000s, the dream of supersonic travel over land was grounded, left behind as an impossible luxury. Now, 25 years later, a new hope has arrived. NASA, together with Lockheed Martin, is rewriting history with the groundbreaking X-59 KSST project, an aircraft designed to prove that supersonic flight doesn't have to mean deafening noise. This time, speed can be silent. Back then, abandoning supersonic wasn't just about a few broken windows, it was a painful compromise. Engineers wanted speed, but city dwellers demanded peace. For decades, the skies remained quiet, but that time wasn't wasted. Aviation advanced. We learned how to burn less fuel, master aerodynamics, control wing vortices with precision, and, most importantly, study not just the decibels of sound, but how people actually experience it in everyday life. Out of these lessons came a revolutionary idea. Don't silence the sonic boom, reshape it. Instead of an ear-splitting crack, engineers aim to soften the sound into something acceptable, almost like fine-tuning a radio until you find the perfect frequency. In this case, it's about controlling the strength of the shock wave. Here's where physics takes center stage. As an aircraft nears the speed of sound, pressure waves start piling up because the air simply can't get out of the way fast enough. At subsonic speeds, those waves slip ahead smoothly. But at supersonic speeds, the aircraft overtakes its own disturbances, compressing them into a sharp boundary called a Mach cone. Inside that cone, pressure spikes dramatically before dropping just as suddenly behind the plane. On the ground, we don't see the cone, we hear it. Two quick pressure drops reach our ears as the infamous double supersonic boom. In the past, the solution was crude but practical. Let supersonic aircraft fly only where their booms wouldn't disturb anyone, over oceans and remote areas. That compromise kept cities quiet, but it also killed the dream of everyday supersonic travel. Now, with the X-59, that dream is making a comeback, this time with science, engineering, and silence on its side. Over the last decade, engineers have mastered something once thought impossible, predicting with pinpoint accuracy how shock waves travel along an aircraft's body. In simple terms, they can now map these waves in time and space, stretch them out, soften the peaks, and turn a deafening sonic boom into a sound so faint it vanishes into city noise. At the same time, regulators have changed their approach. In the past, the very existence of a sonic boom was enough to ban flights. Today, they look at the bigger picture, energy spread over time, psychoacoustic metrics, and most importantly, how people actually perceive the sound. And let's face it, the world is more connected than ever, but still inconvenient. Many cities don't have direct flights, and long layovers steal hours that could be used for work or leisure. This is exactly where supersonic flight steps in. It won't replace standard aviation overnight, but it will slash travel times on long business routes, deliver specialists and critical cargo faster, and connect remote hubs where time truly means money. The real breakthrough came when engineers stopped focusing only on engines and instead redesigned the aircraft itself. A razor-thin nose, carefully balanced fuselage, hidden air intakes, wings shaped not just for lift but to tame shock waves, all of this is no longer experimental flair, but proven design. Another big shift. Forget chasing speed records. The focus now is systematic. Thousands of overland flights, precise ground tests, and even surveys of residents. And to prove it all, the aerospace world needed a demonstrator, a real aircraft that could show regulators the future in action. Enter the X-59 KSST, NASA and Lockheed Martin's experimental supersonic jet, built under the Low Boom Flight Demonstrator Project. Its very name says it all, Quiet Supersonic. And the first thing you notice, that massive nose, so long it makes Concorde look modest. Stretching across nearly a third of the jet's 99.7-foot length, it eliminates the forward cockpit window entirely. But here's the genius, this flaw is the secret to silence. The pilot sits closer to the center of the jet, 
relying entirely on NASA's cutting-edge external vision system, XVS. Using 4K cameras, flight vision sensors, and synthetic overlays, the XVS creates a digital cockpit view of the world ahead. Think of it as flying with augmented reality. Supporting this is Collins Aerospace's EVS 3600 multispectral system, which boosts visibility in poor weather and at night using infrared imaging, together with Collins Proline Fusion Avionics, showing shockwave positions across the ground in real time, the system gives pilots more awareness than a traditional window ever could. Simply put, if NASA's XVS replaces the cockpit window, then the EVS supercharges it, making supersonic flight not just possible, but practical. But that's only the beginning. One of the crown jewels of the X-59's design is its F414 GE 100 turbojet engine, a customized version of the legendary General Electric engine powering the U.S. Navy's F-A-18 Super Hornet. But here's the fascinating twist. Instead of being placed beneath the fuselage like on most aircraft, the engine sits on top of the jet's body. This ingenious relocation isn't cosmetic. It's critical. By keeping the underside smooth and shielding the jet from shockwaves, engineers prevent them from converging at the tail and unleashing the thunderous sonic boom that grounded Concorde decades ago. Thanks to this clever setup, the X-59 can cruise at Mach 1.4, roughly 937 miles per hour at 55,000 feet. But speed isn't its biggest bragging right, it's silence. NASA reports the X-59 generates a noise level of just 75 EPN dB, which is comparable to a car door slamming or distant thunder. To put that into perspective, today's narrow-body airliners typically produce between 86 and 95 EPN dB. That means the X-59 will be quieter at supersonic speeds than most commercial planes are at subsonic speeds. And if you look closely, Aviation enthusiasts will spot a patchwork of familiar parts. The canopy and ejection seat are borrowed from the Northrop T-38 Talon, the landing gear from the F-16 Fighting Falcon, and the life support system from the F-15 Eagle. Why the mix and match approach? Simple. Cost efficiency. By reusing proven military hardware, NASA and Lockheed saved millions without compromising performance. That's why the 2018 contract for design, construction, and delivery came in at $247.5 million, a fraction of what a fully bespoke design might have cost. Of course, pioneering aircraft rarely follow smooth timelines. The X-59 was originally set to fly in 2022, but its maiden flight has since been delayed to 2025. Yet progress hasn't stalled, it's been steady and methodical. The engine was installed in 2022, the plane rolled out of the hangar in 2023, and by 2024, it had completed its first engine run. Then, in February 2025, NASA and Lockheed marked a major milestone, a full afterburner static test, alongside rigorous electromagnetic trials to ensure all onboard systems worked flawlessly under extreme conditions. Spring 2025 brought another breakthrough. Two NASA F-15 research jets soared over the Mojave Desert at supersonic speeds, carrying the same instruments that will later measure and record the X-59 shockwaves. These test flights simulated the real conditions the X-59 will face, ensuring that when the big moment arrives, the data will be accurate and trustworthy. By July, the X-59 successfully completed its first low-speed taxi tests at the historic Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, the same site where legends like the State Route 71 Blackbird were born. Now, just one hurdle remains medium and high-speed taxi trials. These tests will push the aircraft to the edge on the runway, validating its braking, stability, control systems, and sensors at extreme ground speeds. Past this stage, and the X-59 will finally be ready to take to the skies. And that's where history hangs in the balance. Aviation is full of X-planes that dazzled on paper but never made it past the prototype stage. But the X-59 is different. Every milestone, every test, every trial pushes it closer to reality. Unlike Concorde, which delivered speed but at the cost of deafening sonic booms, the X-59 aims to deliver speed without disruption. All that separates it from rewriting aviation history now is a test flight, followed by surveys of everyday citizens. People will be asked one simple question. 
Does the X-59's quiet sonic thump bother you? If the majority says no, regulators at the FAA and the International Civil Aviation Organization could finally greenlight supersonic travel over land. If that happens, the aviation game changes overnight. Airlines would have the chance to revive supersonic routes, not just across oceans but directly over continents. Imagine flying from New York to Los Angeles in under two hours, or from London to Dubai before your favorite playlist ends. By the mid-2030s, we could see true successors to Concorde, sleeker, quieter, and more efficient supersonic aircraft carrying passengers across the globe. But here's the million-dollar question. Will the X-59 really open the door to a new age of supersonic travel, or are we still decades away from living that dream? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop them in the comments below. And remember, today's X-Plane could be tomorrow's everyday airliner.